So we will, we will begin. Toast. Masters. Masters. Yeah, okay. Masters. 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 Cool. Okay. Good evening, everyone. How many of you join us for the first time? Okay, no one is replying me. And I'm not embarrassed. Okay. Cool. Cool. <laughs> it was okay, so it was a commencement yesterday. And I feel so weird because important ceremonies like commencement was held online. Anyways, happy graduation to all of the senior students. And okay. Um, we have diligent helpers and speakers tonight. And most importantly, we have Professor Scott as our GE general evaluator and Chi as one of our evaluators tonight. So now, and, um, people, you can, you can turn off your microphone first. When you have to speak, then you can turn on or it'll be kind of noisy, okay. So now time back to TME. And hi, I'm the TME tonight. Okay, so first, let's welcome our two little helpers. Our timer, she is tall and pretty and also one of our officers. Let's welcome Becky. <gasps> hey guys, I'm Betty. I'm today's timer. And uh, timer's job is to count your time. And there will have red and yellow and green card. I will... I'll let you know if your time is out or it is safe. And if the green card means you have reached your minimum time requirement, and the yellow card is warning you are, if you are manual speaker, you have one minute left. And the last one is the red card. It means you have run off your, off your time. So please pay attention to the time. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. And next is our vote counter. He is tall and thin, and he's also one of my best friends. Let's welcome Winston. Hey, Robbie. I'm Winston. Hi, and, Winston. And I'm today's vote hunter, and I will count for the votes today and for the meeting. And, and the voting is for encouraging everybody to be, strive to become a, a better speaker. Yeah, and and at the, the end of the, the the meeting, and our president will give us three uh, awards. The first is best table topic speakers, and the second is the best speech evaluators, and the third is the best manual speakers. And and at at the end of the the, the meeting, and the our. Vice President and Beth will give everybody the leaks of the votes. So everybody have to turn on the website and the votes for the speakers. And notice that the uh, please do not vote for, for the spe uh, speakers uh, who is who who are disqualified because because they are under or over the time requirement. Yeah. So um, when who, when the timer conference whom has been disqualified on the whiteboard and it will, it will go pass, pass it back to me and you can then you can vote for them. Yeah, and thank you. <laughs> okay. So now that's um, our first speaker. He's obsessed with K-pop music. This is my first impression on me, on him. Then I found out that he has huge passion for Toastmasters Club. So he has already decided to take a job in the future semester. And he's going to talk about curry today. So I've never known that you also like curry because sometimes I cook myself and I prepare some um, green curry for Professor Scott last time. Yeah, so 
Thank you. And let's welcome our first speaker. <laughs> okay. So, hi everyone. My name is David. David. Hi, David. Hi, David. Hi, David. So, today I want to talk about the golden era of curry. So, um, when you see the topic, I assume that you might think that, um, wait, we are going to talk about some delicious curry, right? But, well, that's not exactly what I'm going to do. I'll be talking about NBA basketball players. So before we start, uh, I want to ask you a question. Uh, when talking about NBA players, who is your number one? Is Wrong it uh, like Mamba, Kobe Bryant, the Airman Michael Jordan, mm -hmm. the King LeBron James, or even KD Kevin Durant? So um, to be honest, for me, I don't have that kind of ideal man in my um, heart until the presence of this guy, Stephen Curry. So Curry has a, you know, has a naive and cute face with his uh, lethal three-pointers, which allows him to own the nickname of the baby-faced assassin. And talk about more. He's also three times NBA champions, two times most valuable players. And what's most is that he now currently earned a best NBA record of 73 wins out of 82 games on 2016. And so I want to talk about, I want to go deeper to analyze why is Curry so good at basketball? Why is he, uh, how is he different from others? So the first one is the mobility. Uh, when Curry is not holding a ball, he can run as fast as five miles per hour, which this kind of alacrity, which, um, uh, uh, makes him really hard to be defense from his opponent. And next is the long range and preciseness of, of the three-pointers. So as you can see here, the NBA three-pointers leading per season, um, th those are the top uh, three-pointers. So Curry has includes five of them. So most of the time he's breaking his own record to the NBA uh, three-pointers. And you can see the spots right here he even uh, launches 40, 400, and two few, uh, three pointers uh, in a single season. That is really, really crazy. And next, I want to show you my favorite scene of the uh, Curry game. So, this is the game of Golden State Warriors versus um, the Thunders, Oklahoma City. And it's 1 1 8 versus uh, 2 1 1 8. You have eight seconds left to. So, if you win the game, you will be able to compete for the uh, NBA final championship. So this is how it goes. It's Curry. I'm not sure if you can see very well, but this shot from Curry, um, you know, uh, shatters the, the dream of Oklahoma City to become a championship. And I also can tell that Curry has a, a very, it's very confident is in his basketball skills, and he uh, he never hesitate to shoot a ball, even in the uh, the critical point. Okay, next. So, I want to talk about why uh, what I have learned from Curry. So, um, first thing is the humbleness. As as far as I know, Curry has is always been the same a person when he, the first time he entered NBA. So he always remained modest and humble throughout the whole NBA journey. So that is one reason I really, really admire him. The next is dedicated to his faith. So crazy is a Christianity, the sincere Christianity. And every time he, like he, he had made in a ball, he would pat on his chest twice and then and then uses his right, uh, right index finger to point it up to the sky for crediting the God living inside her, crediting all the good results. And last but not least is the perseverance. So although on the journey, there are a lot of tens of thousands of mockery 
uh, jeer and disrespectfulness towards Curry. But Curry has um, overcome all of, all of the obstacles all by himself. So in conclusion, for me, Curry is, uh, is the model of striving hard work, talent, uh, belief in faith, and most importantly is the relentless of perseverance. So I got, uh, I collect all of the information from my book and ESPN Sports and Safari. So that's if you guys, if you're also uh, still interested in, you want to know Curry more, follow him on Instagram, or you can type Stephen Curry on um, YouTube. I think you'll find more handful and reliable resources. And that's it. Thank you all for listening to it. That's my time today. Thank you. So the curry is not that curry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's definitely not. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and next is um, she is also going to be an officer for our next semester. And you can never think that she's studying in polytechnic. Okay, it's kind of hard to pronounce. And she's very beautiful and she's also an elegant girl. So she's going to talk about coffee and coffee is one of my favorite drinks. When I was busy doing my graduation projects, I, dr I drank four cups of coffee every day. Okay, so now let's welcome Ellen. Wow. Can you see the PowerPoints? Yeah. Yes. So, hi, I'm Ellen. Hi, Ellen. Hi, Ellen. Hi, Ellen. Hello. Today, I want to talk about some facts about coffee. So I came up with this idea about talking about coffee since I found a cup of coffee became indispensable in my life since the work from home had started. So I'm going to begin with the history of coffee and their classification. First of all, coffee is such a popular beverage throughout the world that the people around the world takes more than 2 billion cups of coffee every day which makes the coffee industry more than 4,000 billion US dollars. So let's start from the history of the coffee. It was originally a kind of plant in Ethiopia and was spread to Yemen at the sixth century when the Ethiopian invaded Yemen. At that time, it had brought the habit of drinking coffee to the Muslims since then the Islamic world had to had the habit to take a cup of coffee before they pray. By the 15th century, it has spread through the Islamic world. And it was when, after it was taken to Yemen, it was brought to different places of the world by Deutsch merchants at the 17th century. It was brought to India and back to Amsterdam by the Deutsch merchants. And this is the very first time that the Europeans get to take a sip of the coffee. It also spread to nearby countries. And these locations around the craters has such a wonderful climate for a coffee plantation that it had made a thing called the bean belt. After the coffee was brought to Brazil, it had made Brazil one of the most, the greatest production of coffee throughout the world at that time. And since then, the coffee planted in Brazil was mainly exported to the USA, which has made the USA one of the greatest consumer of coffee in the world. At 1861, the civil war occurred and this has made the coffee a popular, very popular beverage through Union soldiers and workers. At Second World War, 
the soldiers had even invented a new kind of drinking, which is the Americano. By the 19th century, numerous methods of enjoying coffee have came on stage. The European came up with dripping coffee and the Italian came up with espresso. This is the photo of Giorgio Cloni as a endorser of Nespresso. And the USA came up with the instant coffee. Guess what happened in 1971 in the USA? The answer is that the first Starbucks was established in Seattle. There are two kinds of main categories of coffee bean. One is Arabica and the second is Robusta. Arabica is the most popular type of coffee, which takes up 60% of the production throughout the world. It was originally planted in Ethiopia, and now it is mainly planted in Brazil. Coffee shops tend to emphasize that they use Arabica coffee beans, since it can be viewed as a guarantee for their quality. As for Robusta, it only takes up about 40% of the production and it was mainly planted in Vietnam. Robusta is easier to cultivate since it is, has a stronger resistance to diseases and pests. People claim that they also take a, an unfavorable taste when they have Robusta and these two reasons has led it to a cheaper value. So it is mainly used as instant coffee. If we categorize by the extent they are roasted, you can have light, medium, and dark roasted beans. For light beans, it only gone through first time crack, and hence it has a stronger taste of the beans itself. It is described as fruity, grassy smell, and a more distinct taste of their origin. As for medium, it has a sweeter taste and a better perfection between aroma, acidity, and its flavor. As for the dark roasted beans, it has a richer and bolder taste. When you take a sip of it, it has a stronger bitterness. In comparison, the light roasted beans has more caffeine than the dark roasted beans, in which leads to some scientific analysis saying that if you take too much of light roasted beans, it would harm your health. So before I end this, I would like to share several sites I can get coffee around NCKU. Since I'm the kind of person who only takes the tea, I'm not really able to define the quality of the beans itself. So this is the first one. I'm coffee. It's around the stationery store, and I think they have the best latte you can get around NCKU. The second one is Jingle on Shenley Road. My friend is a patron of it, and she's told me that they use like roasted beans mainly. And the best part of it is that you can get patron cards, and to some extent, it saves money. The third one is Yuyang Xianzhou. I haven't tried this before, but it is Wayne and Bess told me that they have the best coffee around NCKU. And it is a store that I'm gonna definitely visit after I'm back to Tainan. And this is the end, thank you. Thank you. Cool, okay, wait a second. Okay. <laughs> Hi, Betty. <laughs> okay. So pretty cool because I think I was drinking too much coffee <laughs> and my health was kind of harmed. Okay. And next we have a very tall girl. You know, I seldom meet girls who are even taller than me. And she's one of our, prof one of our officers. So what she's going to talk about is related to pandas. And um, I seldom mention my family, except Ye Jie, my mom. But, you know, Tuan Tuan Yuan Yuan was given to Taiwan because of my one of my uncle's negotiation with China. And 
it's pretty cool. I can talk about the story later. And now let's welcome Esther. Hi, hi everyone. Hello, Esther. Hi. Esther. Hi, Esther. Hi, hi Esther. Esther. Okay. Hi, Esther. Let's begin. Could you could you see the screen? Could you see the yes, screen? Yes, we can. Okay. So let's start. Hello, everyone, and Esther. Today, I want to share with you a news about Panda by Scott Paley, a reporter in CBS 60 Minutes news program. So in our memory, pandas are lazy, lovely animals living happily in the zoo, right? And their lives are safe and conserved by human well. So two weeks ago, when I saw this headline, I was shocked. So I click it to know what's going on and what is the word extinction referred to. At the end, I will also share my reflection of the news. First, the main idea of the news is about the China, how China and American veterinarians and scientists were together and successfully saved pandas from dying out on the human protection in the past 30 years. And their next plan for further conservation to respond to a new risk of pandas. And there are several important messages scattered in the news, and I will arrange them into three important details to present today. Before the first detail, I want to ask of you, did you watch the American series Kung Fu Panda before? Yes. Yeah. If yes, yes, what is your impression? about the giant panda. Cute, fat, too naive. As we can see in zoos, maybe in our minds, their images are big children, fat, dull, lazy, even sleep much, but it is not true. These are, these are our misunderstanding. You can say it's a stereotype. They are actually not lazy and stupid at all. In contrast, they are quite complex as dogs and cats. In the nature, they only eat bamboo. So here God is named bamboo eater. They have already chewing bamboo about 3 million years when they are in the wild. However, it is a tragedy that bamboo consists of 99% of food sources of pandas and the calories and nutrition content of bamboo is very low. The pandas have to shred 40 pounds of bamboo per day, or they could not have enough energy to be alive. So that is why we saw pandas eating all the day, sleep all the time, because they have no choice. Next, do you know panda is priceless? Not just because they are rare animals, also because they are a kind of umbrella species. Umbrella species means that if we conserve panda well, and then the care and land we provide for the panda to live could also save a wide multitude of other species at the same time. And the second detail is that the scientists are planning to send the panda back to the wild to leave their salad days for a thriving chance. So in someone's salad days is originally shown in Shakespeare's play, a phrase meaning that someone lives a carefree life and has very little experience of living alone in the world. And that is the problem the captive pandas in zoos now face. They get better breeding chance, good nursery and sufficient food by humans, but this makes them be at risk of losing their genetic diversity. So China scientists make research and plans in cooperation with American veterinarians trying to help the pandas again live in the wild. But it is not easy. It's difficult to try many ways, such as dressing the trainer in panda suits scented with panda urine to make panda get rid of dependence on humans. The scientists would also monitor the panda's trace and rescue the panda that is hurt by human activities. 
And here comes the third important details uncovered by the news program. Some concerns behind the panda release to the wild. Just like the predator attacking or the natural disasters or the diseases, sorry, the diseases they never face when they are in humans, under humans protection. Because they are well trained. They are well trained just like the pets, like the dogs and cats. And in the final part of news, the reporter Scott Pelly said after his visit in China, it struck me that that's a blessing and a curse. Yeah, I agree with his view. Do you still remember the cartoon picture, Gofu Shoma? I show you in the first two slides. Some description in this news make me think deeper, to think in another way seriously about the captive panda. News say the pandas are safe by its own evolutionary advantage. They are adorable. So how about the cute, oh no, no, the, the ugly but still rare animals? Do, do they deserve our protection or saving from extinction? Their late 12 more years is in company of humans, land in the wild. Okay. Some days there are 100,000 visitors and that is will be $800,000 a day for the income. So the meanings behind these words in the news reveal a sense of sarcastic we bring pandas from the nature for conservation and then release them for conservation. Now they show their highly dependent on humans. Of course, we make a big success in the beginning to make them away from parish, but it seems that we do it wrong or the intention is not so pure. I think there is a question deserves our deeper reflection. Are those pandas really willing to be saved by us or on the other hand, protecting them in zoos and give them well care, are, are we saving such kind of rare animals or just killing them? So that's the end and thanks for your listening. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And our next speaker, he's going to talk about something I'm not familiar with. And um, I've always misunderstood him as a young boy because he looks young, but he's actually <laughs> uh, studying master degree already. And let's welcome Eric Jia. Can turn on your microphone. Uh, hear me? Hello? Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. okay. So, hi, everyone. I am Eric Cha. Hi. And, hi. Uh, hi. Hi. Yeah. Hi. Yeah. Hi. Yeah. You guys. And uh, today, my topic is language categories in Europe and the Celtic people. <clears throat> so, well, Europe has so many countries and so many cultures and definitely lots of languages that you can see the language differences here in this main <clears throat> picture. So while uh, the language experts have found a way to categorize those languages in Europe. Well, how to categorize the languages in Europe? Uh, the language experts compare the basic words in different languages. Uh, for example, they can, well, we can compare the scene in Spanish, French, Italian, and German. So in Spanish is this, I don't know how to pronounce it. Uh, in French is this, and Italian is this, and in German is this. Mm. So we can see that French, uh, Spanish, French, Italian are more similar. And also language experts compare other basic words like hand and seven and other words. So we can see that uh -huh. <laughs> except <laughs> German. 
uh, Spanish, French, and Italian are more similar. So they are grouped together and classified as Romance languages or Romance language group. So most of the language in Europe can be uh, categorized into a few categories like Germanic, Romance, Slavic, Celtic, Hellenic, Baltic, and uh, Uralic. So for example, English and German and Dutch and Swedish uh, belong to Germanic languages. Mm -hmm. So from language categories to people group. Uh, some historians and experts found that people who speak the languages in the same categories also have relevant cultures and histories. So for example, uh, Spanish, French, Italian language uh, belong to Romance languages. So people from Spain, France, and Italy are uh, classified as Romance peoples because these three countries have similar culture and histories. And also they have the same ancestor. That is the ancient Romans who established the Roman Empire. So uh, uh, groups of people in Europe. So we can see that uh, first, let me introduce the Germanic people in the blue area, uh, including the England, not the whole UK, but only England, and like Netherlands, Germany in the Central Europe and the uh, country in the North Europe, like Norway. The second one is the Romance people, including the people in the South and West Europe, like Spain, France, and Italy. And also a special one, Romania in the Balkan Peninsula. And the Slavic people in the green area, including the countries in East Europe, like Poland, and the country in the Balkan Peninsula, like Bulgaria, and Russia. And also there are Baltic people, Uralic people, Hellenic people, uh, and also the Celtic people. Yeah, Celtic, wait, Celtic people. And the rest of the presentation, I would like to focus on Celtic people because I think they are very mysterious, but a uh, few of us know, never know uh, them before. So more than Celtic people, including the people living in the British Isles, uh, including Ireland, Scotland, and Wales, and also people living in Brittany, in France. So we can see the language similarity in the table here. Okay. So I would like to talk about the culture of Celtic people. First one, I would like to introduce ancient Celtic religion. Uh, first of all, the elf. Uh, Celtic people believe that everything has a spirit inside, including uh, like tree has a tree has the tree elf, and the river and the mountain have the mountain god. And also, uh, Celtic people believe that uh, human spirit won't disappear, so we will we get reborn after we die. And and the third one is about the drilled. They are the priest or like a witch, witches in the ancient Celtic tribe. So they, uh, they know how to utilize the supernatural power and also predict the future. So some literature and artwork like Harry Potter and Lord of Ring, all are influenced by the ancient Celtic religion. So the next one is the King Arthur. Uh, I think, I believe everyone knows the story of the, the sword in the stone. Yeah, so actually King Arthur in the Celtic legend, they are the, uh, he is the king of Celtic people. And he lead the Celtic people fight against the uh, Germanic people. And also, have you guys heard of a board game called Avalon? Avalon, yeah. And also the Avalon Island is from the Celtic legend that Avalon Island is, uh, is where the sword of Arthur created. And also Avalon Island is the paradise in the Celtic religion. So the last one, I would like to talk about Celtic music. So I just play, uh, play a, a, a part of music, wait, what's it? Okay. 
Yes. <laughs> So you can feel a little bit, how to say, mysterious, like natural, like wind, also a little bit sad, but you can feel the music full of uh, fantasy. So if you, uh, if you cannot, still cannot feel the mystery of Celtic culture, you can listen to the Celtic music and you can feel that the beauty of the Celtic culture. So that's the end of my presentation. Thank you. Mm. Cool. You know there there's a band called Celtic Woman and Celtic Men, right? And they sing amazingly well. Yeah, and you can also search it on YouTube. And our next speaker, I think he's appropriate to talk about time because he he performs incredibly well on his academic and playing sports and he's also good looking so let's welcome one of my very good friends wayne hi everyone so wait a second <laughs> okay can you see my screen yeah yes yeah uh, okay Hi guys, my name is Wayne. Hi Wayne. Hi Wayne. And today my topic is about time. And actually, I spent a lot of time thinking what should I present today. And since yesterday is senior student graduation, and this reminds me the first day I stepped into NCKU campus. And at that time, I just think, what will I become after four years of studying? So that is why I want to talk about time, because I think time is the most important part in four years of college life. <laughs> so you now know my topic, does, it doesn't list movie, but anyway, I highly recommend this because it is wonderful. And the real problem I want to discuss is more like the time management problem. And based on some of my friends and my roommates, they suffer from some problem like, have you ever failed to finish your works? And something like procrastination and always busy and have no time to break. And this is very hard to do, but how? So here I want to give you some advice. So the first step is try Google how to manage your time. Do you think it is right? No, it is wrong. Because when you're trying to search how to save your time, you're actually wasting your time now. So I hope my presentation will not waste your time. So here are some of my mindsets. So this first stop, I think is very highly re related to time management. And the third, first thing I want to talk about is goal setting. And why goal is related to time? Because I think setting goal can help you find a clear direction to go like where you can striving for. And if you didn't have a goal, it's just like a chicken without a head. And the only thing you can do just hitting the wall again and again. And actually it's wasting your time. And the goal I mentioned here doesn't need to be some big goal or magnificent, just be realistic or doable. So here I just gave you some easy goal to start with, like hold up and camp, something like this. So the second one I want to, wait, I want to talk about is priority. And the priority here, I think is, you need to know what is urgent and what is important. And if you can make a balance between them, then you will know the priority of everything. Then you can save your time. So you can design your own charts, evaluate your priority like these charts. You can see this chart is about which, what is urgency and what is important. And in my opinion, your homework or the exam in next week is like something is urgent. And 
the goal you're setting is like the thing that is important. So you just put some stuff in this chart, and then you can know the priority. So you can help, help save your time. And the third thing I want to talk about is trade-off. And what is trade-off? Can you can see the picture. The man with white beard said, I want all of them. Yeah. But humans are greedy, but we cannot want everything. We need to make a choice, which is the most hard one. It's the hardest thing in four of this stuff. And I know a lot of people, they are smart and brilliant, but they always been tired. And I think it's because they didn't estimate their own ability. And so I think we should give up something because we don't feel shame when you're trying to give up. And actually I think give up is a courage way to know yourself and it's very brave. And the last thing I want to talk about is about break. Have you, I believe everyone have a experience like you're very tired, but you're sitting in a library studying your subject. So what, you, what is your choice? Will you go to your home and have a sleep or you will insist on studying? Well, I highly recommend you take a break now because when you're tired, it's less efficiency. And if you take a well sleep, you can restore your energy and you can be very efficient on everything. So since we have plenty of time recently because we all staying at home, so we can change now, but how? So just take a first step to follow these charts. This is the charts you can set for each semester. You just put your goal on it. And when you look, when you, after years and year, when you look back of this journey, although it might happen something accident, but you still did a lot of things and you will feel very satisfied. And I guess this is the end of my speech and this may be my last one. And so, thank you. And to all the senior students, happy graduation. That is my presentation. <gasps> I prepared this. <laughs> okay. Thank you, because Wayne is going to study abroad this summer vacation, right? Uh, yes. Yeah, so this is his last speech in NCKU's Toastmasters Club. And I want to talk about that. People always say that um, the four required co courses are your academic performance and um, participating in clubs getting into relationships and go to work part-time jobs. And it's totally different in, in maybe in the US because um, I forgot it's one of the ex, ex principles of Stanford or Harvard. And one of the required courses he mentioned was time management. Because if you can't manage your time, perfectly, then you will not succeed. Yeah, so time management is important. And now we are going to take a break and remember to come back on eight o'clock. Now, Beth, where is Beth? Hi. I'm here. Hello. Hi. 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 Yo. Yes. Yes. So beautiful face. Okay. Wait, wait a second. <laughs> Turn on your camera. Our president, <laughs> future president. So um, and. Turning in and out. Can anyone hear me? Yes. yes. Yeah. Sorry that my my internet connection is bad. So is mine. Is it because of the rain? <laughs> no, it's mine. It might be because of the rain. <laughs> maybe. Yeah. 
Alrighty. So is mine. So can you guys see my screen? Yeah. Wait. Can you guys yet. see my screen? No. <laughs> no, no, no. Nope. Can you try again, Beth? Um, is Beth today's table topic speaker, uh, master? Yeah. Uh, okay. Or maybe we can play the slides for her because Zoom has a function. Function. Zoom has a function called the <laughs> <Zoom. laughs> That's a good name you picked. Yeah, maybe we can do it for her. Function. We can give her some time to. Okay. Well, maybe just type. The question on the chat. Oh no, boxes, she can so. upload. She can upload the PowerPoint onto the group chat. Uh, Beth, can you do that? At least people with laptops can open it. Oh no, where is she? That's okay. I can talk about the story I mentioned when when Esther was going to give her speech. My one of my uncle was the um was the one in charge of. Managing the whole Muzha Zoo. Can you get oh, yeah, it? Muzha Yeah, and it's pretty cool because he was um he had always been a Gong I, I don't know it's English. <laughs> and 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 um when he was in that position, the president was Ma Injo, and they were they they were kind of like friends and colleagues at the same time. And um because he's pretty good at negotiating. So Nanjo sent him to negotiate with China. And because the relationships between China and Taiwan has always been kind of unique, right? Unique. And <laughs> so um <laughs> my uncle he negotiated with them with many cool skills. And finally, they decided to send us Tuan Tuan and Yuan Yuan as gifts because um, it has many political factors and uh, complicated. Yeah, but it's still very cool. And when I was going to graduate from um, the elementary school, my whole class went to the zoo and being guided by my uncle. And he, he's always a good speaker. He gives um, speeches perfectly. So everyone had a very great time. Yeah, so that's pretty cool. And you're back fast. Okay, so time back to yes. our table topic master. So for my poor internet, I'm sorry. Okay, so I'm going to share my screen. Hello. Hello. Can you guys see it? Yeah. Can you guys see it? Okay. No, not yet. It needs a few seconds. <laughs> oh, okay. It's still happening, <laughs> so I guess we'll have to wait. Hello. Okay, so now, now we can see it. Okay. So, hi guys, on today's table topic speaker, I'm Beth. Hi, Beth. Hi, Beth. Hi, Beth. Hi, Beth. Hi, Beth. Hi, Beth. Oh my gosh, internet. <laughs> Beth, we can't hear you. It froze again. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, because we didn't have 
we did not have much time now. So let's jump to our, our today's topic is the just fuck. Wait, wait, what? You guys can hear me? For one second, she decided to not glitch. We hear her swearing. I don't, you guys cannot hear me. I'm sorry. Or maybe the only thing turn we off your camera. Just turn on the microphone. I think it'll help. Okay. Yeah, you can try it. Turn off your so camera and remain yeah. your microphone on yeah i'll turn off my camera yeah maybe it'll, it'll work okay oh, so cute hey so hi guys i'm beth hi beth hi, beth. hi. let's look back on this semester you know time flies and now is our last table topic session this semester so uh i hope you guys can look back uh, on this semester and learn from yourself. So the first question, what is the most memorable thing to you throughout this semester? What's the reason? Describe it. Okay, so um, after you guys div divided into groups, um, I hope you guys can just manage your time and speak only for one minute. Yes, um, now we're back. Is there any volunteer who wants to be volunteer? Angel. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Angel, do you want to be a volunteer? Uh, I forced to be a volunteer. <laughs> okay. Uh, I will say that uh, because this uh, maybe this year is my turning point and the most memorable thing I think is uh, yesterday I participated in an uh, online meeting is related to uh, computational linguistics because in NCKU, I think so. Uh, there are there are seldom professor uh, do um, do this kind of thing. Just related to uh, my my career, my field, because I want to to um, make uh, more linguistic in it. But mm. and uh, yesterday I participated this one and I've. Uh, I get a lot of information, so it's useful. And yes, this is my memorable uh, event in my uh, this in this semester. Okay, uh, that's all. Okay, thank you, Angel. And um, any volunteers? <sighs> okay, I'll point the first person I see, David. <laughs> <laughs> Every time, yeah, okay. So um, for me, it's the, the picnic, the Toastmaster picnic held like two, two, two months ago. I, I forgot, I forgot the exact date, exactly. But thing is, I met a lot of friends and I even called a lot of friends to go there. And also I um, performed two performance on stage. And one is Rubik's Cube and one is very awkward, let it go, you know, with Eric Jack. So, well, it's, although it's, it's, it's awkward because we wasn't prepared very well, it's still, it's still memorable for me. I, I, I don't think I will sing any song, especially Disney song ever again on stage. Yeah. So. <laughs> It's really memorable for me. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so usually awkward thing will be very mem memorable, right? Okay. And next person. Who wants to be the next? Or I'll point someone. Or pick someone. Can you point? Wait, can, can you assign Adam? Adam? Mm, okay, yeah. Adam. Hi, guys. Adam, how, yes, how about you? My memorable moment when I was in college was there was this one time where we, I was a, a president of a student club and um, we were asked to do a fashion show and a whole bunch of us, you no, know, basically just wear the, the traditional clothing style of, of your country. 
and I didn't have one. So basically, I just put together what I had, a, a nice vest, or you know, like this, something like this, similar, and put on my, my black pants and my black shoes, and off I went. Where, whereas the girls, they had the traditional Chinese clothing. And when they wore it, they, they really looked like they were from, from that era. From, I found it very nice. And we just, we had a stage and we had the music. And when the music starts, we had no practice, no rehearsal whatsoever. So basically, we just, we just went for it. And when the music started, every, each one of us just started walking across the stage, and it was it was pretty fun. It's pretty memorable. That was I I liked it, but I probably wouldn't do it again. <laughs> now I'm old and see now I don't think it would look good. I'll look good again in that outfit. So back to tabletop and master. Yeah, thank you, Ellen. Okay, so. Let's move on to our next question. Wait a second. OK, can you guys see the screen? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Next question. What is the worst or the best choice you made this semester? Why did you make, make this choice? What are the influences? Okay, because we did not have much time, so let's just divide it into groups. Quickly, volunteer, it's the last volunteer. regular meeting. Okay, function, okay. Um, I think um, the decision is one of the best and also one of the worst decision of mine in this semester. Because um, you now I'm going to leave Tainan and Taichung in a very near future. So I was asked to um, getting into relationship by some guys this semester and I turned down them, all of them. Cause I think if we, we are not that familiar with each other and we don't have time to manage our relationships, it's pretty irresponsible for me. Yeah, and it's not good for our relationship. So I turned down all of them. And I think it's a it's a best choice of this semester because I don't want to um, hurt anyone. And it's also a worst choice this semester because I don't have many experiences dating with someone. So um, I don't know, but I still have to reach a balance, right? So um, this is my answer. Okay. Done. Thank you. Thank you, Function. Uh, who wants to be the next one? I'll pick someone. Maybe okay. I can be. Really? Eh, who? Hey, Esther. Esther. Okay, Esther, go. Hi. Okay. And um, in this semester, I think the best choice I made is that um, how awkward or how hopeless the things went on and I never give up and I still kept facing it, such as I have a tutoring, tutoring work and my student is going to take the entrance exam to senior high school and he never listened to me. And what I, what I want to ask him to do, he never finished that. So I almost lose my temper because the exam is coming. Um, but I didn't shout at her, um, I didn't go in, and I, I turned, I turned my, I turned my attitude and to talk to, um, talk to him a calm temper, and finally, he gets a, quite a good, maybe a good grade, yeah. And the next is my in my basketball team. Um, our department's basketball team is a flag of the team members, and our seniors want to um, be a sign. 
Hmm. Uh, want to never support the same, but I take up this and I take up this burden. And I think things will be better in the future. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Esther. So, next one. Well, I want the next one. Okay, wait. Okay, I think my best choice in this semester is to join the Toastmaster Club. And it's because actually my plan is to serve as an army this semester, but I'm too young to be serve as an army. So instead, I can only stay in Tainan to find something to do. And I find this club and I join this club. And I'm very happy and satisfied about it because I meet a lot of friends here and hang out with you is very, uh, very happy. And I learn a lot in this group. And it's an unforgettable memory in my, in my life. And I will meet you guys. That is. Oh, thank you, Wang. Yes, <laughs> so he sweet. needs. Yeah, he is going to uh, Netherlands, right? Next semester. Uh, yes. So sad. Yes. <sighs> okay, so let's move on to the next question. Okay, next question. What is the goal that you set at the beginning of this semester? Have you reached it? Why or why not? Okay, divide it into groups. And you can see um, the questions on our big um, group. Chinzu. <laughs> yes. I think I can be a volunteer for this question. Okay, great. Okay, so I, I'm going to start now. Yes. <laughs> okay, my name is Eric Tsai, and I think I set a goal in this term is to learn Python and Linux. And because it, it, it is because my, I'm going to graduate from, I'm going to study master degrees in electrical engineering department. And because I want to get away from the foundry like TSMC or UMC, this kind of industrial places. So I want to learn some programming skills in order to make me get, a, get, a read, get, get away from them. But I think I have some problems because first I I'm not I'm not I'm not people who I'm not a person who is very good at programming so I need some help and the second and thanks to the pandemic I cannot ask some people who are good at programming face to face so I this is kind of, I I think I have some problems about learning programming and the most important thing is that I I think I have figured I have some personal pro problems that that lead to me that I I don't have some I don't have the motivations to learn programming maybe if i want to learn it but after i see those codes i will become uh, my my passion will, will gone so i think this is the i think i don't have reached the goal for learning python and uh, linux this term so i think i feel sorry about myself so, okay this is my sharing thank you eric okay next one who is going to be the next one I can answer this question okay kira yeah so for the semester, I actually try to organize my life uh, using time management, which is which happens to be our wings topic for today. And this is because I was in a bad place last semester, both physically and mentally. And I am addicted to I was addicted to social media and I couldn't organize my life. And I had trouble sleeping and waking up at a normal time. So this semester I committed myself to organize a schedule for my daily tasks and I did my best to not skip any classes so these are the goals that I actually accomplished what I didn't accomplish is improve my physical health uh, I told myself I tried to discipline myself to uh, work out at least four times a week and it gradually went down it was like a downhill spiral I went to three times a week two times a week until I skipped going to the gym for an entire month and uh, once I wanted to take up the hobby and again, the pandemic started. So now I can only work out at home, but now I'm improving my physical health again. Yeah. 
So that's my response. Thank you, Kira. Uh, do anyone wants to be volunteers too? Okay, I'll pick someone. Professor Scott. <laughs> I don't have to talk, I'm not a student. All right, um, <laughs> the goal I had for this semester, actually I've had this goal for the last two years, my New Year's resolution is I'm a night owl. And so I stay up late at night to work, which is fine. But now my lateness is so late that, for example, last night I actually went to bed at six o'clock this morning. So I'm trying to make my sleeping schedule closer to what ordinary people's sleeping schedule is, maybe go to bed at 2.30 or 3 o'clock. And I have not achieved that goal yet, although some days I come close, but... Obviously, today was not one of those days. So um, I'm a failure at achieving my goal. We can work together. <laughs> I got to <laughs> yes. cool. Me too. Yeah, you're all up at six o'clock too. I know I send out emails to my students. I get answers. I'm like, why are you still awake? <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you everyone for today's table topic. And let's move. Uh, go back to our GE. Oh, GE, that's yes. me. <laughs> yeah. You can't go back to me because I wasn't introduced as the GE yet. Aren't there going to be, um, I, I don't know who the evaluators for the speeches are. Are there evaluators for the speeches? Yes, uh, in the chat room. Okay. I don't know. Let's see. Uh, sorry, no, I don't. You don't see it? I don't see it. It's on the top. On the top the first thing in my chat says lynn and then the second yes. thing says beth we can't see your screen <laughs> okay so um maybe i can share my screen and okay. you can see the agenda okay that would be great okay can you see it now i can see it yeah yes. all right so where are we here? here. Gee. All right, well, I didn't have a chance to chat with the evaluator, so I don't know anything about anyone. <laughs> um, but um, I see there are five evaluators and we had five speeches, so can't give an introduction. I'm sure everyone is a nice person and really smart and really nice. So our first evaluator is Sebastian Lynn. I hope Sebastian is- Yeah, here. I'm here. Okay, great. Good. Um, <laughs> evaluate away. Okay. Um, David, I'm your evaluator today, and um, you talk about your favorite basketball player, Stephen Curry. And although there is a little bit bad connection, internet connection in the beginning, and you still have a great um, presentation with clear ideas. Now, um, I'm going to share some brilliant way uh, I've learned from you. I've learned from your speech. And the first thing is the way you introduce your idol with his advantage. And for me, and the only way to play basketball well is you should be a tall play, you should be a tall guy. But from your speech, I know Stephen Curry is not the type of that but still hold the trophy up for three times. Um, it's really reduced my strategy, uh, not pre reduced my pre pre prejudice on the basketball. And overall, I think using an uh, upside down example can, uh, using an upside down example to attract, it's a brilliant way to attract your audience attention. And the second one, the second thing is, you, are, you introduce him, not only his athletic performance, but also his attitude toward uh, his job or his, what, he, uh, what he loves, basketball. And uh, which, which uh, like, his, like he always keep humble and, 
and have perseverance, which um, which can make your audience impressive on what on whom or what you you uh, what you introduce. And I want to tell you the only shortcoming in your speech is you only tell us feel about how your idol influenced your life. And I think uh, you want to when you want to share your idol. I mean, your there's are some your idol is um have a meaningful and maybe have a meaningful um it did a meaningful something for you so you can talk this more and um uh, that's all that's all my evaluation for your speech thank you okay Thank you, Sebastian. I hope um, Timekeeper is keeping track of time so everybody's on schedule here. Again, I don't know anything about our evaluators, so I will assume that Joanne is also a nice person and has good things to say about, I lost track of who our second person wanted, Ellen. Yeah? Yes. Okay, I'm Joanne, okay, and Ellen, I have to say that it is really a good speech. And I have three points I want to share with you. The first one, I think you really did a great job in your first part about sharing the history of coffee because you are not just sharing the, the history, you also put some trivia in this speech. For example, you say that the coffee was spread uh, because the World War II and uh, the Starbucks was started uh, started operating in 1971 in USA. And I think that is uh, uh, really funny is information that we wouldn't know in our daily life. And the second one is, the ad is an advice I want to tell you. You can put more detail in your trivia because I think that will make more connection between coffee and the history we, and the, between the coffee history and the audience. For instance, that uh, the one of my favorite parts in your speech is uh, you say the different place have the different kinds of coffee. For example, the American invents the instant coffee and the Italian is invents the espresso. Those are common sense, but I really wondering that why different place has the different type of coffee. So if you can tell me about that question and I will be more attract, attract on your PowerPoint or your speech. And the last one, I really love you the part that you before you ending your PowerPoint that you recommend uh, three coffee shop to audience. I think that is really good job because uh, drinking coffee is not my habit in my daily life. So I cannot drink a uh, good coffee unless someone give me some recommendation because I would not put too much time on searching a good coffee. So I think you give some recommendation that you really love the coffee shop. So I think that is really good for me. And it's the time I want to drink a good coffee. So that is my point. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And um, our third evaluation evaluator is Chi Chi and the person being evaluated is Esther. Okay, uh, good evening. Uh, for, I want to first, I would like to say congratulations to Astors for giving and completing a very good speech. And I like your speech for, uh, I found that it has several strengths. First, you chose a very meaningful topic that um, is about an animal a panda, which is going to be extinct. And uh, your speech is very organized. You have an introduction explaining about, sharing about the topic, and then you introduce some facts about Panda. And we learn from, we, we, we learn something new from your reports. 
and like uh, it's a kind of uh, umbrella spices, and also it it has uh, some its lifestyle is they enjoy Saturdays. That's something that I didn't knew before. And um, next, you 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 gave us your personal perspective. That's your reaction about the issue that the panda is going to be extinct. And then you post you posted a question to allow the audience to think about the issue, how the way that we should treat panda. So it's reorganized, and because of the organized good organization, that the audience can get into your speech very easy, can follow you very well. My suggestion for your speech is that um, for the content, probably you can provide uh, some reasons why we should, why the issue is important to us, why we should care about Panda. That by, by this way, by proposing some reasons or uh, give us some motivations that probably you can engage the audience to your speech. And second is that to match your speech, maybe you can change your virtual background. Like you, uh, for your virtual, virtual background, you can put a photo that you, uh, of a bamboo forest or a panda, something like that, to make your speech related, uh, to make your make virtual background related to your speech. That's, um, uh, that's one way that you can do it. And uh, the last suggestion is that when you deliver the very, when you delivered your speech, you should look at the camera because I found that uh, you kind of staring at your script and you are, when you are not looking at a camera, you are not, you, you didn't have the eye contact with the audience. So I would suggest that when you're giving a speech, look at the camera, because in that way you have a connection with the audience. Okay, so, but oh, you all, I really enjoy your speech and I wanna say congratulations for giving, um, and thank you for giving us a very good speech and uh, looking forward to your future speech. Back to G. Thank you. Great, thank you. Our fourth evaluator is Jill, who will be evaluating Eric's speech. Yeah, so um, thanks for, thanks Eric for giving us this informative speech today. I really enjoyed your topic. I'm, I'm really interested in most European ethnic groups, but I didn't know that much. I only know like Romance people. And I like the way you, your slides were presented. It really helped us understand what you were saying um, in your speech, especially for people like me who are not really familiar with those European ethnic groups. And when you introduce the different ethnic groups, you use different colors in the map that helps us understand, that help us have some visualization also, starting by introducing the Romance people that we are most familiar with, those languages, history, and then you guide us through your main topic, the Celtic people. And the speed, the, the pace of your speech is just right for me to catch up. And what's more, I like your conclusion. Playing the Celtic music as a conclusion is lovely and powerful. I enjoyed it. And also your description on the music. And if there's anything that you could improve on, that could be when you're introducing um, your slide with lots of European languages or groups. You can ask us a question like, do you know which one I'm going to, I'm going to go into detail? This answer have, uh, has to be answerable. Not like who knows, how can I answer this question? But you showed us several languages and you're going to go into the detail on one of them. And you can ask us the question to make your speech more interactive. Your speech is already informative and interesting. Now you can make it interactive. That will take your speech to an another label. So I hope in the future, I can learn more about your speech related to European ethnic groups and their culture. Thank you.
Great. Thank you. Our fifth and final evaluator is Josh, who will be speaking about Wayne. So, Josh. Hi, Professor Scott, President Function, and upcoming President Beth, and Toastmasters. In this age of information, social media attract our attention too much that we forgot to do proper things. So the time management is truly the skill everyone have to learn. Uh, for Wayne's speech, I have four things that I love about your speech. First, you have good structure of your story. You have table and flow charts that make everyone knows that what you are going to say. You said there are four things that we should keep in mind. The first thing is to set a goal. And the second one is to set a priority. The third is to trade off. And the fourth is to take a break. They are all very important to our time management skills. And the, the second thing is that you describe it very clearly. You have making examples for the every, every point you said, you have examples. And the third one is you add funny motion pictures in your, your, your slide. And that makes people keep in touch with you. Fourth is that you have good time control. And the good time control makes we uh, keep our attention and won't lose the, what you are thinking of. And in terms of points to improve, I have only one for Wayne. Is that the topic, although the topic is interesting, but it looks like you are reporting something to us. As a manual speech, it is a skill of a public speech. So maybe you can add more emotion and passion in your voice and you can make a gesture bigger, then it would be more like a public speech and that, that make your speech from good to great. Overall, it was a fantastic and inspiring speech. It will make me look back my time management skills and every day schedule. Congratulations for graduates from school and back to G. Thank you, Wayne. Okay, thanks to all our evaluators for uh, insightful and thoughtful comments. Um, I believe it is voting time. Is, the, is there some instructions that our vote counter needs to give us about that? Yeah, we'll post um, the Google form link in our chat room. Okay, okay, so um, I probably won't have time to vote because I have to talk now while you are voting. So, and, um, do we and have timer, the please share your screen. Pardon me? Uh, timer. Uh, yeah, the timer needs Betty. to share the screen. Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, you can continue. Okay. So, um, as the general evaluator, um, uh, I'm going to make some general comments about everything that I noticed. And one of the main things I noticed is that giving a speech online is a lot different than giving a speech in the classroom or in the meeting room, I should say, not necessarily the classroom. Um, one of the things about Toastmaster, as I, I think uh, uh, Josh just mentioned, is that it's a public speech. And it's harder to speak in public when there are other people right there in the room with you looking at you, I think. When we're speaking online, um, it's a little easier to be distanced from the audience and maybe we don't get so nervous. So it's, it's a good thing that you can um, learn how to do a good presentation online, um, but it's different, right? It's not the same thing as speaking in person. And so uh, I think that it's good that, especially in this time of pandemic, that we all learn these skills of speaking uh, online as well as speaking in uh, person, but we do need to be aware that uh, 
that it's different. There are different techniques and different things we need to be aware of. One of the things um, I actually, when I had, I don't know how to set up my screen very well. So when people were speaking, all I saw was what screen they were sharing. I didn't see the person. Um, and so when somebody mentioned that someone was looking down at their script a lot, I couldn't see that, but I could tell that some people were reading. Whereas if you were speaking in our Toastmasters meeting in person, you wouldn't be reading because we, you know, we would notice right away if you were holding a script. Um, so reading is not as effective as speaking extemporaneously. The people who spoke, they knew their material well enough that they could speak without having to memorize or having to have a script that they were reading. That's going to be more effective for everyone. Um, I think that the evaluators have to speak extemporaneously. They don't really have time to write a whole script out and practice it um, before they have to give their evaluation. So um, just be aware of that. When you're, when you're presenting online, um, you can get away with reading more because maybe people can't see that you're reading as easily, um, but it's not as effective in terms of public speaking. I didn't notice, um, I often, we used to have you know a grammar a grammarian that would talk about um, speech problems you know with grammar or things like that and I didn't really notice any problems today and that may be because um, uh, I'm paying attention to other things because of the technology but I think everybody spoke pretty well this time both the um, the timer and the vote counter explained their um, their jobs pretty well um, the the TME um, introduced people smoothly and effectively and had, this is a really useful skill, had a story to tell while there was a technical problem and we needed to fill some space. And I think I've mentioned that, that in the past, that um, even in person, there might be something that will go wrong. The other thing I noticed is that the, the PowerPoints were a lot more professional looking than sometimes they have been in the past. Um, Maybe uh, some of you had prepared your PowerPoints for a class and you were giving it to us again, or some of you um, have been have had more chance in the last couple of weeks to, to work with PowerPoints um, for presentations for public uh, situations. So um, I thought that PowerPoints in general were well put together and the, the topics were well organized. So it was very interesting and it was nice to have so many speakers too. I've, I've, I think it's one of the larger, larger uh, list of speakers that I've seen in a while. All right, I have a, I have a screen I want to share. Am I allowed to share a screen? Because I know I'm taking more than my time, and the timer's going to hold up the red card on me in a minute. But can I share my screen? All right, let me. All right, can you see my screen? Nobody's saying anything. Nope. No? no. All right. I don't know how to get out of here. <laughs> All right. Let me figure this out. Uh, share screen. So if I say share screen, ah, and then I do this. Share. Now, can you see my screen? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. So we've already, um, we've already learned that this is, uh, the commencement weekend, I forgot that it was because it was online, which is weird. Uh, but I, so I just want to give the speech I give at the end of the semester every year uh, for Toastmasters about commencement and what comes next. Um, because some people are graduating, going off, and it's especially hard, I think, this year because we can't actually be together to uh, say goodbye or to celebrate our, you know, our last time together before the summer vacation. Other people aren't graduating, they'll still be here, but they're moving on to new things, new activities, new classes, new jobs, all kinds of things. So what comes next after commencement? And so we call the um, commencement, the graduation ceremony, we call it the commencement. And the word commencement means to begin. So the commencement is the end and the beginning. So you're ending if you're graduating, you're ending your time here at NCKU, or maybe not, because you might be going to uh, graduate school here as well. But it's really about beginning a new stage. But even if you aren't graduating now, you might be looking for a job, 
for the summer or part-time for the school year. And so that's a new thing you'll be starting. So I recommend that everyone should keep their resumes up to date and think about preparing for job interviews, not just the people who are graduating, uh, but those of you who are still staying in school. So a couple of things about your resume, you should provide background information about yourself and focus on your accomplishments. So what did you, what did you do? And so present concise and focused information. It's not like telling your life story. It's just focusing on important accomplishments and using action verbs um, because it's about doing, not about talking. And uh, if you're looking for a job, you might have to have an interview. So when you uh, go to the interview, you should know your purpose. Uh, before you go in, um, prove your competence. So find out what the job involves uh, and be ready to talk about how, even if you have maybe never done a job like that before, um, that you have skills that would be useful for that kind of job. And therefore give specific examples. So you might say, well, you know, I've never done that, but you know, when I was a tutor, um, I had to motivate my student to do a good job on the, the exam. And uh, so I think I'll be good at motivating people on my team to get work done. So be confident. And then of course, Toastmasters is the important thing. Uh, you should put Toastmasters on your resume. Uh, it's an international organization. You never know where you're going to run into a boss or somebody in a company that was involved in Toastmasters or is involved in Toastmasters. So you should, you should let them know that you're part of that because that will tell them something about you, about your ability. Um, or if they don't know about it, they might ask you, oh, what is this Toastmasters? And you can explain the skills that you learned from participating in the Toastmasters club. Toastmasters can help you develop your confidence and be comfortable speaking in an interview, in meetings, things like that. Um, so improve your confidence and uh, Toastmasters can help you do that because you'll have practice doing this kind of public speaking and get you started on your road to success. So I don't know how to end this. Let's I can end my show. I don't know. How do I stop sharing? Ah, stop I sharing. It is okay. Okay. All right. I think I, I. Sorry, I went over time, and it must be time to hand okay. things back you over the to the. Always. No. Or back to you. Okay. Tammy. I am the TME. Wait. Okay, I'm the TME. My head is so big. Okay. So first of all, um, there's a first time speaker tonight, and it's David Yu. He has done a very good job. Please give him a big hand. Okay, nice. And next is our best table topic speaker goes to Kira. Okay, and our best evaluator goes to Josh. And finally, our best speaker tonight is Wayne. Okay, and it is not the ending of today's meeting because um, today is our last meeting this semester and before I joined, before I joined Toastmasters, I was pretty shy. Yeah, you, you will find it hard to believe, but I was pretty shy. And yes, just like Professor Scott mentioned, after I joined Toastmasters, I became different and <laughs> was really very hard to believe Kira. <laughs> I was really very shy and um, like I changed a lot my friends and <laughs> my friends and my parents, my family, they said I've changed a lot. I be, um, there, there are more smile on my face and I look happier. I'm healthier, uh, okay, healthier. And um, so, have you improved your speaking skills after the semester? Have you reached your goals? Have you made some new friends? It's my second semester being a president of Toastmasters Club. And this, this semester is also the last semester of my college life. So yes, this also means we will have some new officers. And now I'm going to introduce the new officers to you. And I'll share my screen.
before introducing the new officers, we are going to, ah, we have some old friends who are still going to be the officers. They will still be running a club and at their current position. So Toastmaster, okay, I, I put those two <laughs> pictures and um, our surgeon at arms are still Brian and Esther. Okay, and our treasurer is still Rex, the tallest one. The next is our BPM style. She is still the BPM. And like be um like uh <laughs> chat more and get more devoted into the games or she will be stressed out. Yeah. And next is some new friends who are going to take the position of some officers. Webmaster, Zoe. You can say hi to everyone. Hello, Zoe. Okay, she disappeared. Look. Okay. No. Oh, oh. <laughs> hi. This one, right? Okay. This is Zoe. Okay. And okay. next is our vice president of public relationships, will be Kira and Ellen. Hi. Oh, is Ellen here? Hello. Yeah. Where are so, you? Yeah, should I say something? I'll, I'll say okay, something if you want to. So uh, hopefully you guys remember me. I'll try harder to socialize next semester. And I was the secretary and now I'm going to be the VPPR for the next semester. So hopefully I can see more of you next semester. A lot of you next semester and hopefully in person. Okay. And Zoe and Ellen, do you want to say something? <laughs> then I'll move on. Or you want to say something? Not? And <laughs> okay, okay, no, okay. And next is our secretaries. Our secretaries are Sebastian and Kelsey. Hello, I'm, I'm Hello. Sebastian. I'm Sebastian, and um, Kelsey is uh, Kelsey doesn't feel well today, so she doesn't uh, join. She does. She doesn't participate in today's uh, meeting. Yeah. Okay. So next is our vice president. It's David. Hi, everyone. Hello. I'm uh, very glad to be the vice president and. I hope I'll do well. <laughs> yeah, you will. You have huge passion for Toastmasters Club. I can feel it. And finally, okay. our new president. Are you ready? I think you, you already know who she is. Her internet was not working. <laughs> 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 okay. Uh, Beth. Yay, Beth. Yay. Beth. Hi. The Cheers. queen. The queen. Yeah. Well, thank you, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Lara. Yes, and I'm going to be uh, president next semester. And if you have any suggestions for me or for the club, please feel free to tell me. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Do you want to say something more? <laughs> or that, I'll, that's all? <laughs> I'll say something more. You have um, to be more talkative in the future. Because sometimes <laughs> you need a, you need the skill yeah okay so please join our club next semester okay and if i'm free i will join you yeah because it's all online right yeah uh, all online like Wait, really? the pandemic continue it but i i don't think it will continue will it will it okay then i can join you Okay. okay. So, thank you for attending today's regular meeting, and also thank you for participating in Toastmasters Club. And this is the end of our meeting today. Let's take a picture together. 
And for the ones who are going to graduate this semester, you can put on your penguin coat. <laughs>